Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video, I'm gonna show you some of the tools I use for porting because I know a lot of you watching my videos are trying to get information on how to actually port heads. And I hope I've given you some insight, but it's uh, really, I will say this, as a, as a presenter, it's really, really hard to teach you how to port in a video. Even if you did a series of videos, it'd be very difficult. It's almost one of those things where you need someone there to be like, hey, you need to change this or do this. Uh, you're taking off too much here. Hold your um, your die grinder at a different angle, that sort of thing. So um, I, I guess I would like to do a class like that at some point, but I don't think it have the facilities or maybe even the, the people that would show up. But since I know you're all DIY, most of you are DIYers, I'm going to show you some of the tools I use uh, to port heads so that you can um, get these as well and help you in case you choose to do it yourself. So let's just get through it. So the majority of my grinding is done from these three burrs, and I'll go through each one of them um, and tell you how they're used. Now, I'm going to start off with this. All mine are quarter-inch shank. That's the diameter of the shank. And if you notice, they're all, they're all pretty long. They're six inches long. And I had some people ask me, hey, um, do you have problems when you use these long shanks? I don't. But I will say you can have problems. So, for instance, if I put this long shank into a Harbor Freight, this is a die grinder I just got from Harbor Freight, and I put it in here in a quarter inch shank, and you get the speed really high up, what happens is because they're such a long shank, they're going to vibrate and it ends up bending the shaft. So you probably cannot use a, um, a long shank for what most of you are trying to do. Now they sell them in shorter too, so yeah, obviously this is six inches long, but here's a tip too. These outer parts are steel, so you can actually cut them off to the length you want, and then just shove them in there and run them. I like the six inch because this way, the only thing I'm looking in the port is actually the burr. So I, I've, got, I've got view, I can see better. And meanwhile, the die grinder, I don't use air um, because it just seems like it's in the way. So also, it just makes more noise. So I'll, I'll go through some of them. Um, this is the one that probably gets used the most for porting heads. This is a half inch egg. There you go. Um, this is what I use. It works very well. It's, as you can tell, this is for aluminum. I don't port cast iron, but uh, when I did, I used the same, exact same burr for doing it. It just wore out quicker. So this is what I used. I get my, this burr, this burr, and this burr all come from the same company. It's Woodward Equipment. Yeah, you can look them up on, um, in the internet, and they're underneath the company, Cylinder Head Supply, okay? That's where I get these three burrs from because they keep them in stock, six inches long. They're not cheap, um, not a, nothing porting-wise really cheap. I think these go for about 33. Um, this one's a little bit more, and this one's by far the most expensive, and I think they're almost 40 bucks a piece now. So anyway, this was the most common one used. This does all the bowl, my throat, um, shaping the guide. That's this one. It's, a, it's an oval shape. I think sometimes they call it the egg. I can't remember exactly. Then this is the next one I use the most common. This one's actually a half inch too, and it's called the flame. This one's great for a bunch of stuff, especially when I'm shaping the uh, area over the short side, not the short side itself. That's done with this. This is the flame. Works really nice, and I use it for most of the stuff. And then this is mostly for push rods and almost every intake manifold. The majority of the intake manifold work is done with this. This is a half inch cylinder rounded edge. And you don't want a square one because you'll dig in and it doesn't make the finish look as nice. You have to be more careful. So the rounded one, definitely the better way to go. So these three you can get from cylinder head abrasives. Now over the short side, usually I'll shape the short side actually with this one, but to round the corner over the short side, which this is not even a ported head. This is one that got junked. Someone really botched this. And of course the lighting's bad, but over the short side right here. So actually I'll hit it with the, my, um, the oval. But when I'm trying to round that corner, I use this one. So this is an inverse radius. And golly, the camera. iPhone 14, I'm telling you, not as good as the 11 as far as camera focus. Anyway, uh, this is what I use, inverse radius. It does great for going over the short side, and you can get rid of that ridge. Great one there. And then I've got a couple other ones I don't use quite as often, but they get used. This one is a ball. This is a half-inch ball. Sometimes I use these for chambers. Um, never in the port so much, except for there was a rare occasion where it had a CNC head, as in like it hadn't been CNC ported, it was a core. 
and I needed to dig out the bowl deeper, this was much better to use. But this one hasn't, it's a finer grit, so it's gonna clog aluminum quicker. Great for chambers, because you're not gonna take out as much material. And then I've got a couple of the smaller, these are quarter inch um, ovals, so pretty much this, but it's not as an aggressive as a cut. And these are also used for chambers. And then there's a smaller ball one that I also use for chamber. And sometimes you use this cross cut. You might say, what's the difference? You can tell, let me hold them up together. Mm, camera, there we go. You've got no cross cut and that's a cross cut. These are better for cast iron, but I still use them sometimes anyway, because sometimes it feels like they cut better. These ones, if you're really worried about taking off material, um, these will clog so you're not really taking out a huge chunk. So that's, that's my view on it. Now I left two other ones too, and a couple other ones. You see this, this is called a mandrel. That's what this is. And this is the part number from Goodson. This one's a six inch long and you need these because one of the final steps you have is for doing, um, if you're gonna do it right, or not necessarily right, but it proper, or just depending on how you view proper, you're gonna use a cartridge roll at some point. And these are mandrels, hold cartridge rolls, and they come at different lengths. This just happens to be six inches. I use longer ones. And then you're gonna like, well, which one do I use? Well, there's a couple ones. So this one's from Cylinder Head Supply. These are the standard brown ones. These are the most economical ones, but they wear out the fastest. And so anyway, uh, these ones. But you could step up to, you have to call a Sonar Head Abrasives, and this is the part number for a different one. And they have a couple. They've got the brown ones that are cheap, and then they got these ones that are next step up. These are really nice, they're orange. I'm not sure what material, don't even ask me. But these work really good until I started using these. These are blue and they're, I think there's some kind of ceramic in them. They last the longest, they give the best finish, they are also the most expensive. So I think, I don't know, inflation changes things, but I think these were like, I don't know, 75 cents a piece and these were, I don't know, like a dollar. And these are almost two bucks a piece. So they get a little pricey. Now this, by the way, is a half inch diameter. Great for doing the cylinder head part itself. But on chambers, I'm a little bit finer grit. So I get these from Goodson just because I, to just happen to get them from Goodson this time. Part number's backwards, but there you go. This is a um, 3 8 diameter, and it's a 80 grit. And it works on the same mandrel, so it just slides on there and tightens on. In case, in case you want to just put it on, and you just tighten it, and that's it. You're good to go. If you're wondering why you keep getting lines, by the way, whenever you're using the um, cartridge rolls, like you'll see like you're smoothing it up, but they got these weird lines, your, your speed's too fast. you got to slow down. So anyway, that is that. But I also use this. This is a flapper wheel. There's, which I don't know if, the, yeah. There's a groove cut in this. And what you do is you can buy this. This is a Goodson part number somewhere. There you go. And you take this, you cut off what you need, and then you fold it, and then you put it through the wheel like that, and then you can also clean up stuff. This looks really good, especially getting in tricky spots because it will deform to different um, contours. So great to use. This is a cross buff. I use these for the dividers on the um, intake manifolds. And it's just a divider. Now, I was going really quick through all this because I want to show you. I don't really use air because it's so loud to me. And at hours and hours of grinding, I'm gonna go deaf. So I don't really use air. And that's why all these are on long shanks. There's nothing wrong with air. If you've got the patience for it and you can do it, it's fine. Now they have electric die grinders too. And I used to use um, some big, like I had a Craftsman one I liked. Um, and Craftsman no longer makes it, but it was great. Here's the thing about electric. You really, really, really need a speed controller because on those Craftsman and I'm sure some of the Makitas and stuff, they, they are zippy. Like they'll get up to speed. So they'll get up to speed so fast, they for sure will bend every one of these long shanks. So you've got to have a smaller one that's about this long. But then your die grinder feels like it's in the way to me. Also holding the bigger, heavier thing, it'll end up wearing out your wrist after hours. So, but you need a speed controller. Um, just letting you know, bar down, you need a speed controller if you're doing electric. So, but what do I use? I use this. So, this is a Fordham, and that's an SR, and I've got another SR here. And there's a TX over here, I can't see it, but anyway. Um, it's electric as well, but it's got a shaft that goes all the way through this thing, and it's got a hand piece. Now, I'm going to warn you, most people hate this just because they, they don't like the grip of it, but I like the smallness of it, and also... There's my speed controller. So let's say, and I've got marks. Um, I could turn down the speed if I'm wanting to do something like finer. And then I hit it. See? 
but then wide open. I use a foot pool. Anyway, there's that. I, I also use these pink stones, which I forgot to mention as well. These are rougher. So if you're trying to get rid of your burr finish, you don't want to go right to cartridge roll. You'll, you'll hate your life. You'll burn up through a lot of cartridge rolls and get pretty frustrated. What you want to use is this. The camera will not focus. Oh, I hate this phone. Anyway, this is what they are. I swear to God, the last phone was better. Uh, anyway, they're great for getting out of the grit, um, the rough burr finish. Then you can go on to your cartridge rolls, but you need these. These you get from cylinder head abrasives. They come in different lengths. These are four inches long. Anyway, I use several of them, obviously. Now, I've also got, these are just various others that's been used. Um, I probably would sell, if anybody ever wanted to, I'd probably sell some of my older ones because you might say, why don't you send them off to get you resharpened? I have sent some off before because it's much more economical. It costs like seven bucks or at least two per bird to resharpen compared to like 30 or 40 to get a new one. The problem is like they cut so hard and then they feels like they clog worse and they actually bounce worse. So I don't do resharpens. That's awesome though if you were to do cast iron because whenever you get a resharpen back, fantastic on cast iron because it will dig in. What you don't want it to do is it'll dig in aluminum and try jumping. In other words, it'll bounce. Not ideal. These are some of the bigger stuff I use for uh, bigger ports. But if you're interested, because I've got several, obviously, not all of these are used, but I've got some used ones if you want to buy. I probably sell them for like 20 bucks a piece. The only reason why I say that is because if you're new into grinding, having a worn out or pretty worn, like this one's for sure worn because I use it for doing the throats and it hits the steel uh, seat all the time. Um, that's perfect if you're starting out because it, even though it looks like it's going to take off a lot, it's so dull, it's not going to, you're not going to ruin a piece real fast with that. I mean, I guess you could, anybody can ruin anything, but just give you an idea. Here's some different designs too. So that's a bigger one that I use for um, contours too, but I wouldn't recommend it. It does clog up. It's That's for me to fine tune things before I go on to the next step of it's like some beautifying it, I call. But anyway, there's pieces I've used. Hopefully that gives you some information on some things and parts to buy. You also need dummy valves and some poor guy, and I'm sorry for that one person. He said, can I buy one of your junk valves? Can you reface it so I can do chamber work? And I, it got lost in the emails. Cause I literally get probably 40 emails a day. So if after three days, that's, it's, it's really hard to find them. So if you want to, I do have some junk valves I could sell. Just be patient with me because there's so much going on. It's really hard to answer everything and remember every little detail of things I need to get done during the day. Um, so I'm not going to lie, bigger stuff usually has priority. But what these are is they've got the, um, I reface them so much that they're pretty thin. So they'll sit in the seat. So you put it in into the head itself so it protects the seat while you're doing chamber work. That's why they're all ground up here. See, it protects the seat. That's how I do it. Anyway, um, hopefully that gives you some information. Remember, guys, I'm no Superman, and you guys take care.